Thank you very much. Mari, I won't. Um, Mari, I, I have to say, I won't be taking that time for the standing ovation on your arrival <laughs> against your time, because I know conference wants to hear from you. So, Mary Black. Oof, that's not bad. <laughs> no. uh, well, when I first spoke at conference, it was roughly a year ago, and it was just after the referendum when I'd been asked the night before if I wanted to pass a motion. The second time I spoke at conference, I did so as a parliamentary candidate. The third time, I'm now speaking to conference <laughs> as a member of the UK Parliament. <laughs> the reason that I mention this journey is because it is symbolic of what's happened in Scotland over the last year. The idea that a then 20-year-old chip shop friar could become a member of Parliament <laughs> would have been laughed at, but not anymore. Because in building our grassroots politics and in building our local networks and our organisations, we also began to build this nation's confidence. By handing people the prospect of a blank canvas and telling them, what do you want society to look like? We set alight so many imaginations in this country. We began to realise that we know more about our local areas than any politician can, in London or in Edinburgh for that matter. We educated ourselves. Now, where the canvas now is by no means as blank as it would have been with independence, it is incredibly important to acknowledge that despite the reality that we will always be constrained as long as we're part of this union, the Scottish Government is doing all within its power to continue that national conversation that began during the referendum. By asking communities directly about the issues affecting their areas, we not only allow a greater depth to our understanding, but we encourage the very kind of grassroots, real-life engagement that was set alight throughout that referendum and that changed this country. Now, our party political broadcast talks of the tale of two parliaments. The parliament I sit in is a top-down, out-of-date and out-of-touch one. We're witnessing... <laughs> we are witnessing some of the most right-wing and cruelest policies imaginable being passed in front of my very eyes. I know I don't have to explain to anyone here how deep the wounds are that are left behind after a person experiences a Tory cut. I often find myself looking across that chamber at the Tory MPs and I think, are you genuinely so out of touch that you can't see the damage your policies are doing or do you just not care? <laughs> Either way, I am tired of being lectured by Tories as to why austerity is essential, why these welfare reforms, in fact, they're not reforms, they're cuts, why these cuts are essential. I'm tired of being told that pensioners cost too much. I'm tired of being told that our young people being told that they're not good enough. I'm tired of immigrants being scapegoated for the mistakes of bankers and politicians. <laughs> I am tired. I am tired of being told that pain and misery are necessary for a stronger economy and for a long-term economic plan. Now, in the run-up to May 2016, contrast that with the Parliament in Edinburgh. The Scottish Government spends millions every year mitigating and protecting our citizens as best we can from those Tory cuts. Millions of pounds that we would rather be spending on health, on education or whatever that we choose. The Scottish Government has spent £35 million alone ensuring that no one person in Scotland has to suffer the bedroom tax. It's rejected the economic madness of austerity. It's a requirement, wherever possible, that we must pay a living wage. And that's a real living wage, not the sham of a minimum wage that the Tories are trying to brand as a living wage. We have continually invested in our public services and in our people by speaking directly to the communities. And by continuing that conversation, we only seek to strengthen that base for real change and real equality. Now, we recognise that the only way to build a fairer society is to tackle inequality, not to create it. It is only by allowing people... It is only by allowing people to reach their full potential that you then achieve a strong economy. 
So if there is any Conservatives who happen to be watching, I would say that it's only by investing in people and by allowing people to reach their full potential that then you will have what I call a real long-term economic plan. And it's for these reasons I move Resolution 17 for a fairer Scotland. Thank you.